Hi everybody, I just wanted to make a quick video on some principles that will help your logos to work. So, number one, make sure that your logo is simple. It shouldn't be simplistic. In other words, it shouldn't look like a little child created it with crayons or whatever. It should look like it's professional, but still very, very simple with no unnecessary details. Uh, and the simpler you can make it, the better. Okay, but again, not simplistic, but definitely simple. Good logos are also interesting. Visually, visual interest is created with contrast. So make sure that your logo has high contrast where the most important thing in the hierarchy of your logo stands out the most. Um, one way to do this is to make sure that you're not relying too much on, that you're not relying on color. Okay? If you turned your logo black and white, would it still work? Um, and one thing that makes a logo still work in black and white is that there's plenty of black and there's plenty of white. So there's, there's kind of a balance between the black and the white. So really thin lines, of thin black lines, don't help logos. Um, the, everything needs to, to be strong, high contrast. Um, and that will help it to be visual interesting. In fact, I would say design your logo black and white first, and then at the very end, add a little bit of color okay, and see, see, what, see if it works. Um, number three, logos have to be scalable. So definitely use vectors only. Don't use any pixel-based graphics. Your logo needs to be, it needs to work when it's very large and very small. Zoom in and make sure you don't have uh, little funny shapes and anchor points that aren't uh, that aren't working the way that they're supposed to. Your logo should be super scalable. Okay, number four, your logo should be unified. Everything should work together to create that big message, the gestalt. The, the typography and the graphic are in perfect partnership. Things should be close together but not crowded. Okay, closeness indicates relationship between things. So you want things close and unified but definitely not crowded and congested. Uh, number five, your logo needs to be readable. It needs to be very clear what the main idea is and it should be you should be able to read it quickly so immediately you understand, your audience understands the, the gist or the personality or the emotion that your logo conveys even from far away. Your logo should be unique. That means uh, all the competitors, they don't look the same. You know, Coke and Pepsi, they have a distinct look uh, that says this is our organization, this is what we stand for, this is what our personality is. Um, also make sure that it's not cliche. So when you do um, image searches for reference material, then make sure that you don't just copy a photo or a clip art that somebody else already created. Also stay away from brushes and uh, the flare tool and things like that in Illustrator that um, are cliche. And finally, uh, your logo should be iconic. Remember, it's a symbol, it's not a story. It, it's more like a word rather than a whole paragraph. And so you just can't put everything in your logo. If you have a tagline for your organization, leave it out of your logo. In fact, you might want to just use the acronym or the, you know, the abbreviation of your logo, of your organization. You want to do anything that you can to boil it down into a single symbol, an icon that represents the organization. Okay, so those are my, my top seven tips, what makes a good logo. Um, also, I wanted to show you when you do your final logo, um, you need to make sure that you follow the, the specs. And all the teachers understand the specs just a little bit differently. When I look at the specs, this is what I, what I, what I understand, that you take one logo idea you create a color version, a black and white version, and then a white version on color. So I've created this logo just for, for demonstration purposes. Uh, let me zoom in and just show you my three different options. It's for an organization called Grasshopper Graphics. So I made kind of a graph paper, whatever, look in the back. Um, and then this two-toned green um, for, the, for the grasshopper. Then I for my second idea, I thought, well, if, since it's GG, Grasshopper Graphics, what if I took two Gs and reflected them across from each other? So same idea, still a grasshopper. Um, I like how the text is working here with the 
graphic. And then same thing, I like how the text is working with the graphic. This grasshopper is probably too small, but I still thought it was cute, uh, especially when you zoom out. That, that might not be readable, but the G and the H is readable, so I think that that kind of works. But for demonstration purposes, let's say that I decide that this is the logo that I want to use for my, my final. Okay, so what I would do is create another artboard. And there's actually an artboard tool. It looks like this. It's right above the hand tool. Uh, if I click on it, then everything changes. I get these, you know, this dashed line, everything grays out. Um, I'm just going to hold Option or Alt and drag this artboard over here. Okay, so what, what I just did really is just made a copy of my original artboard. Uh, so there's two of these. And that way I can get rid of these two. I don't need them on this artboard. And I'm going to make copies of my logo. I need three copies of it. Now I want to be sure there's plenty of white space. Whatever you do, don't make your logo really super big and you know fit three really huge enormous logos on one piece of paper. You keep them small so that there's white space. That's really important. You also need to type the name of your organization at the top of the paper. Make sure that there's white space above it. And I would say make the point size, use Myriad Pro, because it's a nice generic um, sans serif font. Use Myriad Pro 8 point would be great. Um, I center aligned it, and I'm just going to type grasshopper graphics at the top there. And I better zoom in to make sure that I spelled it correctly. Nope, I didn't. So there we go. Grasshopper graphics. So it shouldn't, this name up here shouldn't detract from anything else on your paper. That's why you need to keep it small. Um, you can use the alignment buttons to make sure that it's in the exact center of your paper. Uh, and that's that. So now I've got my color version. Now I need a black and white version, and there's a couple of changes that I'm going to need to make when I turn this black and white. I've done a lot of work to make sure that everything is a fill, so I don't think I have anything that's a stroke on my logo, so that will make it a little bit easier. See, you can tell on this tools palette that nothing has a stroke or an outline on it. Now, that might not be true for your particular logo, but... Um, you'll have to you know, work with the strokes and the fills. Now when I turn everything black, notice I get this big black box. I don't want that. So I'm just going to ungroup everything with the Shift Command G as a shortcut. And then I can uh, put white in my black box. And also there's a couple of little things that I did um, right here. See these little things? Those were supposed to add um, some separation with, from the circle and the antenna. So I'm going to put white in, the, in those, and you'll see what I mean here. Okay, so that looks better. Um, also, because this graphic was in two halves, because I had two colors of green, uh, sometimes those, those halves show up when you print, you see a little white line in between. And I don't want that, so I'm going to shift click on these two sides and use the Pathfinder palette to add those together. Same on the, the body of the grasshopper. I'm just gonna unite those two sides. Okay, now that one's ready. So I've got my color version, my black and white version, and now I need a white version. So I'm actually gonna delete this one and use my color or my black and white version because I think it will be easier and I'll just bring this down holding option and shift to keep it straight and to make a copy and then same thing I'm just going to fill let's see actually before I do that I'm going to take a rectangle on the bottom of my paper and it needs to be big enough okay and I want this rectangle to be this green color. And then I'll move it behind everything. Yeah, this is the long, the hard way to do it. Let me just go arrange. Here, I'll do this up here so you can see what I'm doing. Arrange, send the back. Okay. And then 
I'm going to select everything in here. Whoops, not that. I'm going to select everything in here <clears throat> and fill it with white. Okay, except for this box. And I'm going to turn that the same as my background green color. And then that's pretty good. I don't really like, oh wait, except for these little things, they also need to be green. And I don't really like the way that these eyes look. So I'm actually going to make a, a circle and put white in it and uh, send it backwards so until almost all the way to the bottom here. And I'm, I zoomed way in so that I could get this white circle kind of in the middle. And uh, this thing I'm going to turn that same color of green. Okay, because when my logo is, is white, oh look, this needs to be white as well. When my logo is white on color, the eyes don't look quite right like this. So I'd make both of my eye, the eyes of the grasshopper look like that. Okay, so this then is what the final should look like. Oops, almost what the final should look like. I guess I've got some more work to do on these other... letters. There we go. So you should have number one, the organization name at the top in a very small Myriad Pro 8-point font centered on the paper. Uh, logo number one, your color version. Logo number two, your black and white version. Logo number three would be uh, white on color. And make sure that you've got white space. So this color, for example, or let's see, this logo is going to need to come down. And be sure that there's plenty of white space. Don't make your logos too big. Uh, make sure that they all fit nicely with plenty of white space around them on the page. I should probably um, make all of these a little bit smaller. Okay. Anyway, there you go. I'll see you guys in class on Tuesday.